Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to the School of Personal Finance. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the biggest money mistakes that I have made throughout my life. Now, keep in mind, I am into personal finance. I have been since I was young. So these aren't going to be like your, you know, typical things not to do in your 20s type stuff. Like I did start saving for retirement very early. I was always pretty good with money. So Hopefully, by me telling you about these mistakes that I've made, it will prevent you from making the same mistakes in the future. Let's get to it. All right, so these are mistakes that I have personally made starting in my early 20s. And I'm going to start with the first one and just kind of walk you through all the way up until, you know, this age. So even though these are mistakes that, you know, a lot of people probably make, I thought that it would be helpful because they're not like the plain, you know, vanilla mistakes that you hear about every day. Also, you know, I'm a financial advisor and I have been basically my whole life. So I thought that, you know, you might at least find it a little bit interesting that these are mistakes that I'm making, um, even though I've studied this stuff and, you know, have been involved in it basically since high school. So the first one, which is really stupid and I should have known better, but I do have a little gamble in me, so I'm willing to take risks sometimes. But the first one was I put 5,000 bucks in a penny stock, really just off the recommendation of a complete stranger that I had met that day. So I was working in the bank at the time and I was sitting with somebody who was telling me about this company, this stock that was about to explode and to check it out. So I looked it up and I decided, you know, that I'll take a, a chance on it and invest 5,000 bucks in it. And I didn't get that 5,000 bucks back. That stock, uh, it did go up a little bit over the next week or so, but then it eventually went to zero not too long after that. So that was a pretty stupid mistake to make. And it just goes to show, I mean, there's no get rich quick crap out there with these penny stocks. It's just, uh, you know, the pump and dump scams, they're real. It's just all BS. So don't, uh, don't get involved in that stuff. And then the second mistake that I made was something that happened gradually over time. And it was in my, you know, late 20s, mid to late 20s. Once I got married, me and my wife, we both had very, you know, stable, good incomes. My wife was a teacher. I was working in a bank at the time and we were doing well. We didn't have any kids just yet. And, uh, you know, I got that feeling like we had money to burn. So I was always very diligent about saving in retirement accounts. So in my mind, I don't know why I believe this, but I thought as long as I was, you know, maxing out my 401k plan and putting as much money into retirement accounts as I can, that anything above that, you know, I should just be able to spend on whatever the hell I wanted. And, you know, I wasn't crazy with things, but, you know, we would go out to dinner, we'd go on nice trips. I just wouldn't worry about it. My mindset was save for retirement. And as long as you're doing that, you know, you're, 99% ahead of the game, which is probably true, but I did, you know, have an opportunity to do much better than I actually did during those years because I just felt like I had money to throw around. And that leads me into the third mistake that I made around the same time was that I would rationalize in my head that it was okay to commit my income to monthly payments. Like I thought, you know, if I could afford the monthly payment, my income isn't going anywhere. I might as well just, you know, lease that nice car or buy whatever it was that uh, you know that had a nice affordable monthly payment because I knew that I could make the payment. So it's a terrible mind frame to be in because you're committing your future income, you know, to satisfy urges and things that you want to purchase right now. So it's something that I totally recommend that you not get in the habit of doing. And that could happen with purchasing a house also. You might think like the mortgage payment, you know, I could afford the payment even if it stretches you um, and you know you're willing to make it or with cars, with anything that you're going to finance. Just remember that life changes and committing your future income to these monthly payments there's such a uh, you're giving up so much as far as how you could be investing that money and doing other things with it it's just not a good way to go and now the fourth mistake that i made which you know hindsight is 2020 but it was very silly and i highly recommend that you do not make the same mistake and that was owning too much of my employer's stock so i worked for a bank when the financial crisis came around and I had their stock, they used to match in the 401k with using the stock. So I had their stock within my 401k, but then I also own shares outside of my 401k. And one morning I woke up in 2009 and the bank pretty much went bankrupt and the shares that were worth $40, 
a few days before were now worth a dollar a share. And I lost a shitload of money and it was a real kick in the gut. And not only that, but when the bank, it got taken over by another bank, they came in and they changed everything, including the compensation plan. So not only did I lose a bunch of money in my brokerage account, but my income also changed dramatically when that happened. So it was a rough time for me. And looking back, you know, owning your company's stock, it's just very rarely does it make sense because if something happens to that company, you get hit from both sides. You could lose your job and lose all the money that you have invested in that stock. So it's usually not a good idea. And before I get to number five, if you're enjoying this video, remember to hit that like button, just tap on it for me there. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please take a second to do so. I appreciate it. And I'm also starting to post on Instagram, usually once a day, maybe once every other day or so. So check me out over there, follow me on Instagram. And then the fifth mistake that I have made time and time again, and I need somebody to just smack me in the face, you know, anytime I'm, I'm trying to do this, and that is trying to time the market, where you think that the market's going to drop and you say, you know what, let me get out and then I'll get back in once the market drops. And you've probably heard me talk about this on other videos, but it's just very hard to time the market or to try to trade stocks to say, oh, you know what, I know that Facebook's coming out with earnings after the bell. I'm gonna buy some Facebook stock because I believe that they did really good this quarter. You just don't know. You don't know what surprises are around the corner. You just don't know what could happen. So timing the market, timing individual stocks, it's very difficult and you usually end up on the losing side of that trade. So just don't even bother trying. And then the sixth thing that I did that I also always tell people, don't do it no matter what, you know, no matter how bad you feel or whatever the situation is, don't lend money to friends or to family. So you could give them money. If you have no expectation of getting the money in return, that's one thing. But to lend them money, you know, thinking that you're going to get it back or needing it back, it's just a, uh, it's, it's a bad idea because you just don't know what could happen and it causes, you know, friction in the relationship. I once lent money to, you know, a close friend of mine and I'm not getting that money back. And it is what it is and you move on from it. Live and learn, but, uh, but just don't even put yourself in that situation because it usually ends badly. So if you want to give money to a friend or a family member, that's great. Help somebody out, but don't lend them money thinking that you're going to get it back because it just causes problems. The seventh mistake that I've made is thinking that the past would always continue into the future. So I've always been a spreadsheet nerd. I would, you know, enter in these formulas and project everything out for the rest of my life. So based on however the market was doing or however much I was saving, what my income was, I had, you know, my one year, my five year, my 10 year, my 30 year, I had all these projections all worked out in these elaborate spreadsheets. And I thought that I was, you know, that I knew everything that was going to happen. But, you know, life changes, things happen, and you can't plan that way thinking that, well, since this is always, you know, the way that it's been, that's the way that it's going to continue going. It just doesn't work out that way. Things could look dramatically different for you five years from now than they look today. So you have to plan for the unexpected and you have to expect change. And this leads me into the eighth and final mistake that I'm going to discuss, at least in this video. I guess if I went through all my mistakes, we could be here for a month or so. But this one, you know, is more in the present for me. And that's, I focused way too much on saving for retirement while ignoring like a midlife bucket. Having money saved for, you know, this 35 to 50 year old range. I was always so retirement account heavy, like when I was in my 20s and in my 30s, I'd make sure to max out all my retirement accounts. And then I started investing in real estate. So any money that I saved, I would invest, you know, try to buy single family homes with. And that's also long term type of investing. So I didn't really have much money for this midterm, you know, midlife bucket that I'm currently in right now. So, you know, I have a new phrase. I call it the, you know, the midlife crisis fund, which I think everybody should start saving for right away because you just don't know what's going to happen. Being better prepared for, you know, this period of my life is something that I kind of overlooked when I was younger. I wish that I invested better for these years, you know, between 35 and 50, basically, instead of just focusing so much on, you know, making sure I'm on solid footing while I'm younger, while also saving for retirement. 
So it's kind of like that barbell, you know, I was worried about my 20s and then I was worried about my 60s and in between kind of gets lost in the shuffle. So that's a big piece of advice for you is if you're not thinking about that or focused on it, start a midlife crisis fund just in case you happen to have one. All right, so that's it for this one. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, friend me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a good day.